Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Friday's trading, the 1st of September 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app by the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, let's look at the actual stats here. So US markets continue their screaming rally higher on the back of hopes of a potential tax cut on the back of NAC technology stocks leading again. It certainly seems like Apple, uh, obviously iPhone 8 or iPhone, whatever cycle it is, I've given up now, okay. Uh, whatever the cycle is for the iPhone certainly seems to be triggering risk of a risk as well. So investors embracing risk. North Korean concerns people have forgotten. Debt ceiling concerns people have forgotten. It's amazing, uh, totally amazing. Uh, the the, the uh, incompetent uh, Mr. Trump, obviously, ha that's been forgotten. The investigation, Russ investigation with regards to his son and himself, that's been forgotten. Okay, uh, certainly seems like stronger GDP numbers certainly have propelled the markets higher. Talk of tax plan, again, that certainly seems to have propelled the markets higher. So it's amazing how the uh, U-turn in the S&P 500, I mean, look at the actual move here. Again, I'm just making you aware that I'm actually short the S&P. I was certainly looking for a H&S formation uh, to actually play out here. Obviously looking for this right shoulder. I was looking for a retracement here. And it certainly seems like we're pushing right back up to the previous high. I mean, I was looking at FIB, uh, around the FIB, uh, say, 50%, um, 61% certainly to hold. And it starts to reverse lower. And that certainly hasn't been the case at all. It seems the way in which the markets are trading now prior to NFP. It looks like we're, we're going above 2490, then obviously breaking to new highs. So, again, very, very impressive thrust on the S&P. You can see the weekly chart here looking for a H&S formation, looking for a market to reverse low, and that hasn't been the case. So, again, very, very impressive move. And again, I've been on the wrong side of the market all week, okay? Certainly make you aware of that. Been on the wrong side. Totally wrong side of the market. Certainly remain, uh, maintained a bearish bias on the S&P and the NASDAQ, and the market's gone against me. So, I just have to lick my wounds, continue, and uh, reassess the market. Okay, now, in terms of Asian markets, let's look at the Asian markets overnight, first and foremost. Hang Seng, certainly negative. Shanghai more or less flat, Nikkei up 0.2%, nothing spectacular, okay? As you can see, S&P 500 certainly pushing higher uh, and retesting that key resistance at 24.75 prior to NFP. So it's all about NFP now. NFP will dictate the next potential market move and we'll see exactly how that unfolds, okay? Uh, again, let's uh, watch out for the numbers and then we'll react accordingly. Okay, so in terms of European markets this morning, economic data, uh, you've had the Chinese data coming out stronger than expected. China Caxin coming out 51.6 versus the 50.9. Okay, although that's been offset by Japanese manufacturing PMI and capital spending, certainly coming in on the weaker side, 1.5%. Versus eight percent, and then fifty-two point two, or fifty-one, fifty-two point two versus the previous fifty-two point eight. Also, we've had uh, Spanish manufacturing data coming in weaker. Uh, CHF retail sales coming in weaker as well. On the positive side, you've had uh, also Germany. PMI certainly coming in slightly weaker. French PMI coming in more or less in line, along with the Irish uh, our PMI. Okay, Irish GDP coming in more or less in line. Uh, European PMI is coming in more or less in line. Uh, UK uh, PMI certainly actually being expectations, sending the actual price of sterling higher as well. Okay, so again, keep an eye on that. Uh, in terms of uh, payrolls, okay, payrolls, average estimate, I think, uh, present is around 180k. So let's see how what the average hourly earnings is as well. Okay, let's see what the unemployment rate is, and then obviously we'll react accordingly. You have uh, uh, manufacturing PMI, Michigan consumer sentiment as well, ISM. Uh, construction spending, Baker Hughes. So again, quite a raft of uh, economic data out from the US and we'll see how the markets react accordingly. In terms of the technical picture now, let's just quickly go over to the uh, German DAX. Okay, looking at the German DAX here, certainly benefiting from that weaker euro, although it has started to reverse now on the back of that potential news uh, story yesterday with regards to the ECB. So keep an eye out for that. The daily chart certainly is breaking higher. 60 minute chart at the moment, you've certainly closed a gap. Very impressive. Okay, certainly close a gap here on the upside. Okay, so you have the unfilled gaps below certainly to close. So keep an eye out for that. Multiple gaps now, one, two, three gaps. That certainly need to close on the, on the downside with regards to the German DAX. You do have a resistance around this region here at 1.1270. So watch out for that zone here at 1.1270. Certainly looking for resistance to hold. Okay. Then you here have the diagonal trend line as well at 12.250 if the market or German DAX certainly continues higher. Okay. Now, in terms of the 10 minute chart, let's just look at a 10 minute chart. Certainly pushing higher. We've closed that gap. Very impressive. Okay. You're coming up to the next potential resistance now if the German DAX continues and you're resistance at 12,170. You do have previous support equals resistance, but that certainly hasn't held thus far. 
Okay, obviously you have gap fill resistance as well. So let's keep an eye out for those two. Now you do have the unfilled gap below. So again, you have gap at 12,050, you have gap at 12,000, then obviously you have the gap below around the 11,950 zone. So all those gaps certainly come into play, certainly indicating a potential move lower on the German DAX. Looking at the French CAC now, French CAC certainly has been very impressive, certainly bounced off the back of that uh, weaker euro ever since we put in the top bit of bottoming tail, should I say, sorry. Okay, so again, mm -hmm. let's just update this for you. We've closed the gap. You're just basically connecting the uh, trend lines here together. Okay, so again, uh, you are now coming into turbulence, into potential resistance on the French CAC. A key resistance around the 5140 zone, currently in that 5130 zone as we speak. 60 minute chart at the moment it has been very impressive, certainly impressive thrust higher, but having said that, you, you are now coming into resistance in this region here, okay, around the 5150, certainly looking for risk aversion, okay. In terms of the FTSE 100, let's just bring up the FTSE, FTSE itself certainly is into resistance as well, uh, as you can see here, 10 minute chart, uh, certainly looks exhausted from my perspective, 60 minute chart at the moment, you have broken past that key resistance of 7440, whether that's a fake out, we'll certainly find out, okay? But the daily chart certainly is indicating resistance on the daily chart. So you are looking at weakness, six, the weekly chart as well. You're in an inside bar, you've broken out, and you are now looking to potentially reverse lower. Okay, so that's my uh, status quo in terms of European markets. My bias certainly remains bearish going into NFP, certainly looking for the risk aversion trade, especially given the daily, the weekly chart, should I say, certainly has a bear flag formation in play. On that note, please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers, and also visit cfds.com and certainly take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye now.